Welcome to Tech Brother with Amit. Today we are going to learn how to log or get the file names from different folders and put into SQL Server table. So if you guys see here, I have a, file, a folder, input folder that has multiple files. So I have customer file, employee file, fixed width and whatnot. So they, these are the different file names I have it. And then I have another folder inside that has one file. So what is my goal? I want to read all the file names from main folder as well as from subfolders and put that information into the SQL Server table. That can be useful, uh, you know, in different scenarios where you want to know how many files you have in each of the folder, okay? What are the file names in each of the folder? And once you have the information in SQL Server table, it's easy to qu qu query that, uh, you know, information. You can uh, uh, group them and do a lot of things on that. So let, let's start. Open your SSDT or bids, whatever you have it, and then go to the SSIS packages tab, create a new SSIS package. Okay, so right now it created SSIS package with package one name. So let's rename this one. So we will say load file information to SQL table. Okay, so to load the information into SQL server table, we need, need to have a table, right? So I have prepared, uh, table definition so this is how our table will be looking like so i'm saying create table dbo file information that's the name of the table and uh, file id integer identity and i have file name in which uh, uh, i will save the folder path with file name and then we have load date time okay and that value i have provided load date time all right so the value coming for this column is default and for id it is going to be identity it's the only column we have to populate is file name okay so let's create this table in the test da database and uh, then uh, work on ssis packet okay now the very first thing we need we need to read the files with folder name uh, folder structure you know or the path of the folder so what we will do we will use the for each loop container okay Inside the for each loop container, we can read uh, the file names and the, all the information in the folders. Okay, but we do not want to hard code the path of the main folder. What we want to do, we want to create a variable. The variable name should be, or you can have anything what you like. I'm gonna have it a uh, folder path. Okay. This uh, variable is going to store the folder path of a main variable. Okay. We have it here, paste it here. All right. So why I'm doing this one? Why I'm creating the variable instead of using directly into the for each loop container? Because if uh, you are deploying this package on the production UAT or any other environment, you might have a different folder structure from where you want to read the total files information. Okay. So that's where you can use uh, this variable in the configuration and provide the value what you like. Okay. Let's uh, double click on the for each loop and then uh, go to collections. Here, what we are doing, we are using a for each file enumerator, all right? So we do not want to provide the value for the folder here. We are using a variable, so hit on expressions, go to directory and then expressions, and then provide the value, uh, provide the variable. Okay, fine. Now, static asterisk dot asterisk means all, any file with any name, dot asterisk means on the right side means any extension. So what we want to do, we have file and name. That's what we want to retrieve or we want to have fully qualified. That means folder path with file name and extension. Okay. Or we can only extract a file, uh, file name. And then uh, we have option here and, and traverse uh, subfolders. So that means uh, any folder inside the, the, the main folder, we want to read the information from them as well. Okay. So what I want to do, I'm going to select a fully qualified, that means folder with file name and extension. And I'm going to hit this one as well because I have subfolders. Okay. So when it is going to read the information for us, we need to save somewhere. So we are going to create a new variable. Okay. I'm going to call it full file path. Okay. That will have folder path as well as file name with extension. All right. Now we have the information. We have read the information, let's say, and now we need to insert that information into SQL Server table. To insert the information into SQL Server table, we can use execute SQL task. All right. Inside the execute SQL task, we need to create 
a connection to the SQL Server database where our table is. So I'm going to use the OLADB connection type and then make a connection to the SQL Server database. Right now there is already connection. I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to make a new one. So while uh, you are working on this, uh, different projects, uh, you will creating a uh, different um, connections. They will be available to select uh, if you want to re reuse them. So your choice, okay? And uh, you are using test DB as a database. Hit OK. Now we are fine. Here we are providing direct input, okay? What we are doing here, we are writing an insert statement and then uh, passing the value of that variable. So we are going to write insert into dbo file information and then provide the column file name and then we say values and they have parentheses and say question mark what i'm doing here i only have to provide the value for this column okay so i have put the question mark and what i'm going to do i'm going to go in the parameter mapping and map a variable value to it okay so if I have more than one columns and I want to provide more values here, I can always put comma here and next name. And then I have to also question mark here, you know, and uh, put a um, question uh, comma and then question mark. OK, so you can ha put as many as you want. You can use a, a, a store procedure here, you know, and map the, map the parameters and, uh, and uh, use other objects if you like. Okay, so also you can have a variables and SQL statements and whatnot you, you can use here in the execute SQL task. All right, go to para parameter mapping. Now add a new variable. So what we are going to do here, full file path. That's what we are using here. This is input, yes, we are providing input so it will be used for our insert statement. The data type is a worker in our case. I'm writing it you have the option to drop down and it has all different data types what you you know want to select so i use i write it and then this one is kind of confusing parameter name here when you are using a, a oladb connection you can't really provide the parameter name here what is happening here you have to kind of provide index so the very first one as it is first parameter we are providing zero so if you have the next one you will provide one and keep going leave this one you know uh, parameter size as a minus one default you don't need to bother yourself about that okay so now what is happening our for each loop container is going to go and loop through the files and get for us and then each file will be inserted into sql server table by using execute sql task let's run our ssis package before we run it let's prepare our select query and see if we have some data in the table or not just to make sure okay so we don't have any information in this table right now let's start our SSIS package okay so the package completed successfully okay that's good news let's run the select statement again all right so what happened it read all those files with the folder names and then inserted into the this uh, SQL Server table. Now, now you have the information in SQL Server table. It's very easy. You can always extract the file name only and have you know um, folder names separate, and uh, you can group them and whatnot. And also, you can have as the files has a date. You can always you know extract date part and see like what type of files you have and uh, you know whatnot. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. I will see you guys next time. Thanks.